talked about this moment earlier in the week at the Wall Street Journal event. Gary Cohn was on stage, uh, and the moderator asked a group of CEOs, uh, if tax reform passes, who here is going to increase their investment? And only a couple of hands went up in the room. Uh, Gary Cohn said, why aren't there more hands going up? Can you answer that question? Why aren't there more hands going up in a room like that? Sure, you would sure assume the CEOs would say, yes, in fact, we are going to invest more in tax reform passes. Is, is yeah. the, the administration missing something there? So, so, so that that's a great question. And I went on a, a little bit after Gary Cohn. And when they asked that question, it was kind of hard for me. Because like here, there are really bright lights, but even brighter there. And so I couldn't quite see how many hands there were. But when I was there, it looked like maybe about half the hands went up. and. Uh, I think if you go back and look, uh, that it, it could be that people had time to think about it. But as an economist, if I go back and look at the academic literature, very often people survey CFOs and they say, hey, if we change the tax code, would you guys do anything? And they tend to always answer no in surveys. But if you look at the hard evidence about what they do, imagine if they didn't respond to taxes, then they wouldn't be pursuing their fiduciary duty to maximize profits for their shareholders. And so, so it would be totally irrational for them to do that. And firms that did act rationally in response to the tax code would put them out of business by taking advantage of the tax code. And so, so the point is the hard evidence is that people do respond. In fact, one of my very, very first papers that I ever wrote when I got out of grad school is in the Brookings papers where we looked at the 1986 Tax Act, the changes that it made to the business tax code and how it affected investment, and there were very large effects uh, right here in the front. Uh, yes, yes. Gene uh, Sperling, who was once in your position in another administration, mm -hmm. says that this tax plan made historic costs $1.5 trillion, and it's a deficit hole. And he says, it basically, this is in a tweet, um, just paraphrasing his tweet, he says it basically doesn't justify that cost for 100 million households. Tax increase. Well, well, you know, I, I respect Gene a great deal and, and consider him a friend, and I disagree with him about that. And, and I'm sure we'll at some point have a point to a chance to talk about that. But, but here's the way I think about it, and what I would say to Gene if he was here: that if you look at the Joint Tax Committee score in the tenth year, they say that the tax bill costs about 170 billion dollars. If you look at the CBO projection of GDP, then in the 10th year, GDP is about $28 trillion. And so the amount of deficit that you're talking relative to GDP in the 10th year is only 0.6%. It doesn't take a heck of a lot of economic growth to cover that hole by the 10th year. And so the idea that, that right now we have the highest corporate tax on earth generating almost no revenue because people avoid the tax by moving factories to Ireland, that if we fix that, if we repair it and make the US an attractive place again, that it's going to blow a hole in the deficit, it's just just, it's just not economically rational. And I know that the Joint Tax Committee score says what it says, and I respect the professionalism of that staff. But the fact is that, that the OECD has a study, which we'd be happy to email you, that says that the US in the corporate tax base is on the wrong side of the Laffer curve, that we've got such a high corporate tax rate that we're chasing business offshore and losing revenue. And so the idea that this blows a hole in the deficit, I think, is just incorrect. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.